This video will help you better navigate your iPhone with dual SIM technology. So if you have a physical SIM card and an eSIM card on your phone with two different carriers or even one carrier with two different plans, then this video is going to help you out and customize your phone so you know where to navigate to, to switch between your two plans and to help you decide which parts of your phone sh you, should you be using with which cell phone plan and on which SIM card. So if you need help navigating your iPhone through dual SIM technology, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you how to do very simple tasks that can be very frustrating if you don't know how to navigate your device. So let's get to it. I'm Sherry Riggs, this is What's Loud TV. So this video is part two of a little eSIM series I am doing here on Wislout TV. The first part was just helping you learn more about eSIM, what it is and why you might use it. This part two is specifically for navigating your device and helping you customize all of these different options in your phone to make sure your phone is performing the best it can be with this technology. So if you're just a little confused about what eSIM is, then definitely check out that video up here. It'll help you navigate the questions that you might have about eSIM. Uh, but this video now is just going to be explicitly about how to work through your phone to make it the best possible device for you with dual SIM cards. So let's get to it. So there are a few different chapters to this video, which will be laid out down here. So if you have just one specific question about how to navigate to a specific part of your phone for one specific thing, then take a look down here or in the description where I have all of those chapters laid out and we'll have them listed out here real quick so you can see what I'll be covering in this video. So what those chapters are, I need to look at my, my computer to help me remind myself what I'll be covering because I can't memorize it all. Okay. so how to add an eSIM plan to your phone, how to label these different plans in your phone so you don't get them confused. We're gonna look at the default settings of eSIM on iPhones and how to change those or how to go through and rename them if you named them wrong in setting up your eSIM in the first place. I'm gonna show you how to assign contacts to specific SIM cards in your phone if you want one contact on a physical SIM and your other contact on an eSIM. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna help you figure out call forwarding and call waiting with dual SIM cards and how do you switch between your physical SIM and your eSIM if you wanna use one or the other or you wanna change and make one the default and one the secondary. So those are a few of the things we'll be going over. I may have missed a few, but you can look in the description to see and look in the timeline to see if there's a chapter you want to skip to, but let's get to it. The first section we're going to is how to add an eSIM plan to your iPhone. Let's jump right in. So when it comes to adding an eSIM plan to your iPhone, every carrier does it a little bit differently, which is kind of frustrating. There should be a universal way to add an eSIM plan to your phone, whether it be iPhone or Android, but that is just not the case quite yet. So I'm gonna do a brief overview of how the major carriers do it. That being Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. So let's start with T-Mobile. With T-Mobile, you can download one of their apps in the app store when you decide which plan you want. And then really all you need to do is sign up and T-Mobile will have you download it into your device and it's really quite simple, as easy as that. If you wanna do take a look at how that is done, I have a video up here forget which direction it is. I have a video up there showing you how to sign up for T-Mobile Test Drive, which is an eSIM plan for iPhones, and signing up for eSIM on any of the other plans should be just as easy. When it comes to AT&T, AT&T does it a little bit differently in a way that I don't love, but they use uh, QR code technology. So you can scan a QR code with your camera and that will download basically the plan from the internet as well. Uh, but you do that by going into your settings on your iPhone. So let's cut to a video of that showing you how AT&T will have you download a plan. So to download an eSIM plan onto your iPhone from AT&T, you need to go into your settings, you need to go to cellular, and then you need to go to add cellular plan. Here, you'll see that the camera option has opened and what AT&T will do is give you a QR code in the mail that you will scan here 
and it will scan that QR code in and then your AT&T eSIM is good to go. If for some reason scanning this QR code with your camera inside your cellular option in settings doesn't work, there is an option here to enter details manually and then on the QR code paper that AT&T gives you, all this information should be there, like the activation code, the confirmation code, and the SMDP address. So that should all be available to you if the QR code doesn't work, but that's how you do it with AT&T. Let's move on to Verizon. So when it comes to Verizon eSIM technology, Verizon will also have you download an app which will beam your eSIM plan straight into your embedded SIM card. Now, I'm not gonna go through and walk through the specifics of all of these carriers because that would be a really long video and I just don't have the time or the space to do that on my phone right now. I don't have all the options to download each individual carrier onto my SIM card, but you should know that each carrier is very straightforward about the process. They offer really easy directions, but if you need help, comment, the, comment below. I'll try and help you walk through your, your eSIM upload process. The second part of this video is how to label your dual SIM plans in your iPhone. So let's get to it. So one important thing to know when you have multiple cell phone plans on your phone is that you do need to label them and it helps just to keep track of everything that's going on in your phone. So how do we label them and what does it mean? Well, first you go to settings, go to cellular, and then you will see the different options for lines that you have on your phone. Right now I am using primary and secondary. Secondary is T-Mobile, primary is AT&T. You can label these as you're setting them up. So what this basically means is primary is my default line and secondary is my line that I'm testing out from T-Mobile. My primary line is where all of my cell phone calls will come into and all my texts. So my default voice line is primary. If for some reason I wanted my default line to be secondary, then I would just make that check mark. I don't want that. So I'm gonna keep my primary line, my default line, but that's, you can always change that if you want. And as well, if we go into cellular data, right now I'm on airplane mode, so I don't get notifications. However, Depending on which line that I wanted my data to come in from, I can choose primary, my AT&T line, or secondary, my T-Mobile line. I will, when I'm not on airplane mode, have this be primary um, because I like my AT&T service better than my T-Mobile service, but that's something you can customize and change after setup and during setup. And if you want to change the way your lines are labeled, you can do that as well by going to primary. If I wanted to make my AT&T line something else other than primary, I can do that as well. Um, but I am going to keep it primary because that's what makes the most sense to me. And if you want to change your secondary line to anything other than secondary, you can do that as well by going over here to change the labels. Like if you were traveling and this was your travel plan, then you could make it travel. And you can find all of this in the settings app under cellular and going to the individual line that you want to customize. And that is how labels works with multiple cell phone plans on one line with dual SIM technology. The next section is what are the default eSIM settings and how does that affect your original cell phone plan and how do you navigate that? So let's go through that real quick. Now we are talking default settings when you have multiple lines. When you set up your second plan, which will likely be your eSIM plan, you're able to customize that through the setup process. What will generally happen though, what the default settings will be is that your OG line, your original line will be your default voice line. And all of your texts and phone calls will go through your default voice line unless you choose to make individual contacts go through specific cell phone lines, which is what I'm going to show you how to do now. To have different contacts assigned to different cell phone lines, you go to your contacts page and you choose the contact you want to change and what line you want them to call. So I'm just going to test this out with my roommate's phone number. <laughs> so right now we can see that Sarah is being used on my primary line. If I wanted that to change, I would just tap primary and then I would either choose my travel number 
or my primary number. I'm going to keep it on primary because I don't want to mess this up accidentally. But if you wanted to say, make one of your clients be on your business line versus your primary line, then you could just tap this and that would, mine says travel, but yours could say secondary or business. And that is how you assign contacts in your phone to specific lines on a dual SIM device. Now there's one thing I really don't love about dual SIM technology and it's about how all the phone calls work. So if you're on line A and line B calls, will you get that phone notification? How does that work? Well, I'm going to show you how to turn on call forwarding and show you how to turn on data switching so you can be sure never to miss a single phone call. The next subject we're going over is call forwarding and how to set that up so you don't miss any calls on either of your lines. So for the most part, you should be receiving calls as normal on both lines. But if for some reason you're nervous about missing an important call that you don't wanna miss and you will be using your secondary line or your primary line for most of the day, then you can turn on call forwarding so you can be sure not to miss any calls. So how you do that is you go into settings, which I'm already there, and then you are going to scroll down a little bit and go to the phone section. Tap that and then you scroll down just a little bit to call forwarding, tap call forwarding. Now say I'm traveling and I don't wanna miss any calls on my primary line. So what I'll do is I'll tap my primary line and I will forward those calls to my travel line when that pops up, <laughs> if that ever decides to load. So my call forwarding is not loading, but this is where you would go to forward calls. You would go to settings, then phone, then call forwarding and choose which line you want to forward to another line. Now we're gonna check out how to switch between your eSIM and your physical SIM. Maybe you're using data on one and you want to be using data on the other. That's what this next section will show you. Next, I'm going to show you how to manually switch between different lines for using data. I kind of already went over this before, but we're gonna give it its own section. So the reason I'm going over this and why it's important is because I was testing out my T-Mobile line. I made that for my primary data, but I absolutely hated it and I didn't know how to switch back to my AT&T data. So this is how you do that. You go to settings, which I am in already. Then you go to cellular. Then you go to cellular data. Right now it's on primary because I switched it, but if I wanted it to be on my travel line or my secondary line, I would just tap that. And then I am officially now on T-Mobile data instead of AT&T data. And you can figure that out by swiping down from the top right corner and seeing whichever one of these is on top. T-Mobile is on top, so I'm using T-Mobile. If I were to switch my cellular data back to AT&T, which is my primary line, I would tap it. And then if I pull down again, it's in the process of switching over. Let's see if it will load officially. But if I pull down, oh, there we go. If I pull down, now my AT&T service is on top and my T-Mobile service is on bottom. As you can see, my T-Mobile service in my area is not great. You can see that the bars are very low, um, but my AT&T service, full service all the time. So T-Mobile takes a second for me to get working out here, which is why I'm spending most of my time on AT&T. But that is how you switch between your two networks on your device. Another downfall of having two SIM cards is that it might be kind of difficult to know what network you're on and when. So right now I'm gonna show you how to tell what network you're using, how to switch your default, and what is the default anyways. We're going over that right now. The next thing we're going over is how to turn on data switching. So some people might not want to turn on data switching, but I don't think it can hurt all that much. So the reason why you would turn it on is specifically if you are on line A and on a regular cell phone service, um, and then a phone call comes in on line B that's maybe a Wi-Fi call, then you would get that notification only if Wi-Fi switching was turned on or data switching. So you really want to keep cellular data switching on so you don't miss any Wi-Fi calls depending on which line you are on. So to get there, you go to settings, then you go to cellular, and then you go to cellular data, and then you turn on allow data switching, and that will make it so you will never be without data and that you will always get any call coming in from a Wi-Fi call no matter which line or service you are using. And lastly, the perfect way to end this video is deletion. How do you delete an eSIM plan if you just need to get rid of it and want to get a new one or you just want to clean up your phone? We're going to check out how to do that right now. 
Lastly, we are talking about how to delete an eSIM if you want it off your phone, if you're not using it anymore or you canceled the service. So what you do is you go into settings, which I am already in, then you go to cellular, and then you tap whichever line you want to get rid of. In this case, it would be my travel plan. And then I would just click remove plan. I'm not quite ready to remove it yet. I'm still testing it out, so I'm not gonna follow through. So I'm gonna cancel that. But to get rid of your eSIM plan, that's what you would do. Thanks for watching this little eSIM series. If you have any other questions about eSIM technology, let me know in the comments below. You can also follow us on every major social media platform where we are active and constantly looking to interact with y'all. So definitely don't be afraid to reach out there. Thanks for watching. I'm Sherry Riggs and this is Whistle Out TV.